very excited and happy to be here. And Laura is going to share her screen with me. Uh, or I'm going to take over controls for sharing. There it is. So you're going to see my screen now. And so we are ready to do vocabulary fall activities. And I have to say that I have a third grader and a preschool teacher, or a preschool child, so I really have an even better understanding of all of the work that you all do every day. So thank you. I'm sure it was a stressful, tough Wednesday, but also a lot of fun. So just so you have a sense of what is our goal today, and I always like to lead off with the goal. We're here for one and sort of one purpose only, that you will walk away with skills and strategies to help your students learn words and skills and strategies that you can use tomorrow because I always want to be practical, practical and applicable and really make sure that you're spending your time on things that will help you in the classroom. My first activity I want to talk about is the vocabulary pumpkin patch. And you can see here that I always, when I have an activity, there will always be two versions of it. So when you download something, you'll see over here on the left, there's always the elementary version first and then the middle and high school version second. And so what I like about this is I always try and make sure that I'm using easier words and phrases here for you on this side. You can also always modify it. You can uh, delete the directions. You can just use the printout because I am an English teacher and so I don't have a graphics design background. So I send my ideas to Sadlier and they actually have a graphics design team who builds my ideas. And so I like to tell people that it's really like I use teachers pay teachers, but it's all free. And so everything that you get looks really high quality and professional and is done by actual skilled people. But you didn't have to buy a book and you didn't have to buy a lesson plan. You just have it and you can modify it in whatever way you want to make it your own. So you'll notice here the directions. And again, this is asking students to describe a pumpkin using vocabulary words, similes, metaphors, puns, hyperboles, alliterative phrases, or other literary techniques. And if these, uh, the alliterative phrase and literary technique might sound a little grandiose to your students, that's quite all right. Uh, you can just ask them to use, uh, I know that my son and I talk about puns and similes and metaphors, or you can simply use this with a first grader. You can just give them some pumpkins and say, hey, write about uh, the pumpkin that you carved for Halloween or describe a pumpkin. And having them write, I know, is sort of the biggest key area for really all elementary grades. The more that they can write and revise and talk about specific moments and pulling out, the better. And so really the goal here is that they start to use their own vocabulary uh, and the vocabulary that you're teaching them to make those moments uh, more enriched and more detailed. And so I always try and give a specific example here. So this, uh, these words, the staple, penetrating, envy, and disaster, a little tough for your younger grades, uh, but they are coming from an older grade, uh, fourth grade workbook for vocabulary. And so again, modify it as best you need. The second activity, uh, we've started with pumpkins, we have the beautiful design, now we're moving into haikus. And just teaching about poetry, and I know that last year in second grade my son did just this beautiful poetry all year long and he cut and pasted poems into a notebook. And we're still reading those poems again, which makes me so happy. And I think, okay, uh, as they get older they're going to still hang on to that love of poetry. And so asking them to write their own poetry uh, is great. It may be more difficult for the younger grades. It may be a great stepping stone for the older grades. So you can see that this is the direction as written. A haiku is a Japanese poem, usually about nature. The 575 verse form, incorporate at least one vocabulary word into that haiku, and one unique image about the idea of nature. So those are the directions as they're written, especially the older elementary grades that would work quite well for using that vocabulary. And you can notice that you can even ask them to have two haikus, one on the front and one on the back if you're making this a longer activity. But even at a, an earlier elementary level, you can just delete these instructions and just have the leaf and ask them to describe a leaf or go take a walk outside uh, and then have them come back in and describe what they've, what they've encountered. So really, please use these beautiful activities in however way works best for you and collaborate with older grades so that they can maybe do the same activity a couple times and then build upon it each time. And again, there's a lot of play in terms of how long you want to take because I often get asked, how long do you spend on vocabulary? And if I'm doing a review exercise, maybe I only have five minutes before lunch and we do a quick 
uh, I have these copied and printed, or maybe in a station rotation, this is one of the rotations, or maybe it's an extra activity if they're done with their rotation early. So you can decide that you only want them to do one. This is an extra activity they're going to do two. Uh, however, that works best for you. Now, one of the things that early on in my career I was not sure how to organize was that substitute teacher binder. And now I know all of us are on Pinterest way too often and get a little overwhelmed by all the beautiful uh, things that make my classroom perfect and wonderful. Here you can just print and go, and you don't have to worry about creating perfect, wonderful uh, boards and designs that are already done for you. So you can just download this whole packet, and it's got a note to the substitute teacher, and you can certainly change this note as it applies to your grades and your people, um, but essentially the rules and regulations, the important information, other FYIs. And so just some good background information in case you go, oh, I forgot to talk about what needs to happen with if a student is misbehaving. Oh, I forgot to give the teacher a couple options in terms of teachers and students to trust. Oh, I forgot to tell who the principal was. I didn't remember that <laughs> until I was about six years into teaching. So just some good FYIs to help you model your own notes. But then there's already these binder tabs created for you and attendance sheets and just an overall substitute teacher feedback form, which is awesome and so much better than, hey, write me a note on how the day went and you get, it was fine. That doesn't help me at all. So here we've got, they can just circle overall class behavior, the noise level, attendance and punctuality, any issues and concerns, and finally, how did the day go overall? So this is my personal favorite right here because literally this has changed when a substitute walks into the room. They have a lot more information they can fill out other than just it was fine or it wasn't fine. There's also basic rules and procedures in this whole lovely binder. And then you can also have lesson plans and activities. These are just the cover pages and then you can add in what you want uh, for your own lesson plans and activities. And I know we always had to make sure just in case it was some freak day you didn't know you were going to be absent, that you had um, a set of things the students could work on if you didn't have time to prepare anything else. So this is a great place to keep your emergency worksheet day. If you have to go to that for whatever reason, you get violently ill or something happens and you can't even think to plan a substitute lesson for the day. Okay. And so, so that's that, and I'm also really interested in terms of what other people might add to this binder. So please uh, let me know. I see some questions popping up here. Uh, answer questions, ask me questions, or give me comments on what else you put in the substitute teacher binder, because I want to know. So over on uh, our next assignment is really one of my favorites, and I know that you'll have a lot of students in cars, uh, and this could even apply to modes of transportation. So it could be bicycles, uh, it could simply be describing your shoes, but the idea is that you are creating an item using your vocabulary. So here, uh, it all came about because we rented a Buick Enclave, and that is one of the vocabulary words for my students, an enclave, a safe space, uh, kind of cave-like. So here, I created my own car, the Toyota Assault. It's not a real car but then I had to talk about uh, selling it to other people, so making you the invader of the road. And you can see all of these italicized words are vocabulary words from an upper elementary grade level. The road has many hazards these days, chaotic road work, careless drivers, bizarre weather conditions, make it a difficult drive. So I've had to incorporate all of these vocabulary words into selling my car. What better way to attack the road? And here I have simile for invader. What does an invader do? They attack the road. In an assault, you can invade each drive. So again, more synonyms or root words. Uh, the aggressive front grille, the hardy metal bumpers, the misleading tinted windows, the blunt air horn, the impressive rotating tire wheels. So really creating this souped up car is a lot of fun. At the same time, they're really learning their vocabulary and thinking about where those words can go into their description. And I often like to have them read their descriptions in a kind of fun voice where they're the announcer. And you can also have them at tables, read them and figure out which one is the best and have the top five go to the front and sort of elect a one, two, three winners from there. So really have a lot of fun with this activity. And you can see 
and there is this lovely printout. So again, for an early elementary teacher, you can use this printout in whatever way you want. Describe this car. Use at least one word that we're learning. Use some transition words. Lots of ways that you can apply the beautiful graphics to whatever activity you're working on. So use it how you need to. And the next one, of course, because we're talking about fall activities, is designing the perfect Thanksgiving. And you can see again that there's always going to be the vocabulary activity for grades one through five, and then for six through 12. And so right here, again, I've highlighted that in this case, and this is what they create. So basically they're thinking about what would make that perfect meal. And so they have four different foods they have to talk about. Here's a Thanksgiving, a classic Thanksgiving example. And again, as they describe, you have to make your mouth water and embed vocabulary words that will help you design that meal. And if you want to ask students, simply you can see this cutout here, they get to draw the foods. So they, a first or second grader won't have as lush descriptions, but they can still use a quick phrase, they can still start writing about, okay, what did you have for Thanksgiving? Or even a perfect meal, it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving, maybe it's an alternative uh, that you had in your family, or what would be your idea of just a perfect meal? So really they can have some fun with this, whatever age they're at, to think about, okay, yummy food, and maybe it's all full of desserts. That's your idea of a perfect Thanksgiving. You've got pie, and you've got ice cream, and you've got whipped cream, and that makes your dinner. So really, again, having fun with vocabulary, I think is the most important uh, lesson that hopefully we all are already doing and can continue to do. Because if the students enjoy playing with words and playing with their writing, then they see writing and vocabulary learning something fun, something exciting, and something they're going to want to continue to do. So again, another look at what the Thanksgiving example entry is that you can give students as a model. And then there's always the turkeys talking activity. And so I'm sure you've seen variations of this before, but I just love, again, the great graphics team just makes every activity look so much better than I ever could. And so you see here the K through five one and the six through 12 one, and the, here's the description of the directions. Your turkey is tired of being eating. Save your bird by giving the best speech, describing the many foods on the table in such amazing ways that no one will give him a second glance. And then here you can fill in how many words you want in your description. Special distinction goes to the most delicious description, the zaniest description, all in the name of learning vocabulary and rescuing a turkey. And if you don't want to use these directions, write your own or simply hand them the turkey and the word blurb and have them <laughs> write what the turkey is thinking, write how he's trying to get out of being eaten on Thanksgiving, write why he's not the best turkey to be chosen, he, another turkey needs to be chosen instead. Just have some fun with your writing and your vocabulary with this activity. So those are just a taste of the many activities and also games that we have on the blog. And you'll notice that you can simply Google vocabgal.com or you can go to sadlierschool.com. And here's what's awesome is that it's not just about me, although let's be honest, sometimes it is. Uh, but here we have core grammar, core literacy, progress in math. So there are three other subject areas that you can also get great activities and the same beautiful quality handouts from different aspects that you need to work on in your school day. And so right here are the other three aspects that there are bloggers with great activities, great games, great ideas. And then you can see down here that I have this gray bar that really highlights different aspects. So we have the, just if you want to look at the games, just if you want to look at how to write with vocabulary. We do a word of the week every week, which is fun to do with your classes. It's also fun to do on your own or with your family or at school to help enrich your own vocabulary. And I found that exhort may be a word that your third graders don't quite know, but if you say, hey guys, this is the word of the week, or hey, this is my word of the week, let me see how many times I can use it, you can show that you're still learning words as, long, as well as they are. And so have some fun playing with this word of the week. I also have a lot of great elementary school author interviews. Uh, my favorite is Jared Krasowska, and he has the most wonderful interview about why words and learning words are important. Uh, he's one of my absolute favorite authors. And we have lots of other ones, like um, uh, Jack Gantos, who wrote Josie, Joey Piazza Loses Control, and Pigza, 
uh, and lots of great ones. So definitely check out the author interviews to show to students uh, and they can see a real live author up close and personal and what they think about words and writing. There's also teaching strategies because I mentor uh, usually for sometimes more teachers and so just some good strategies if you're mentoring or you are new to the classroom and you want some good tips and reminders, please check here. And then finally, obviously, the seasonal. We hit fall, but come back for winter, come back for spring, come back for summer. And then overall, if you want all the resources sort of in one place, you can also click here on the blue resources and find these things also, again, organized. So this may be an easier place to look at everything. This sort of breaks it down week by week. And so again, Coming up here, as I'm saying, for the breaking down um, overall, those are what I wanted to point out, the author interviews. And hopefully when, this was short, but hopefully you walked away with specific skills and strategies for students to learn new words and for you to have a whole bunch of new ideas and templates for you to use for whatever you're working on in terms of writing and reader response and vocabulary. So I'm anxious to hear questions and feedback and comments. So Yeah, thank you so much, Sarah. I mean, I forgot, actually, to invite people to write their questions in the question box to the right of your screen. But I will do that so now. And uh, Sarah, you'll be, you'll be asked these questions. I actually do have two. But I want to open it up for everyone to look at their control panel on the right-hand side of your screen and open up the uh, question box and type in a question for Sarah if you have any. Um, and you can be very specific about your grade level, um, about your your teaching of vocabulary. I have a couple here. Um, we have one that is asking uh, you, where do you get your words from uh, that you that you work with in your vocabulary instruction? And that's a great question I always get. And, and I will tell you that as an English teacher, I went to Sadlier back in 2004, and I had been looking at lots of different vocab books. I had been at a different school, and we used one that I really didn't like. And so my current school that I'm still at was using the Sadlier book, and I just love it because it breaks down words. And at the elementary level, it's awesome because you get a passage that begins uh, with the words embedded in it. And it's fiction, it's nonfiction, it's a great passage for kids to read and see how the vocabulary works in context. And then the next page is the, are all 10 of the vocabulary words, and each word has a sentence after it that shows it being used in context. It gives a very student-friendly definition. They don't have to look it up. They don't have to think, oh, does it mean this? Does it mean that? Uh, and so then it has a series of activities to do and to play with so that you really learn the words by the end of the unit. So I'm a big fan of the Sadlier vocabulary workbooks, and they have them, I know, at the elementary level. So I definitely would check them out because they're really helpful and lovely. Thank you. A little plug there, and I appreciate I that. <laughs> but we have another part of that question. Ones. You're my favorite. What's that? Said I've What's looked that? at all the other ones, and yours is my favorite. Oh, thank you. So we have a second part to that. Um, yeah. How would you use uh, your vocabulary uh, instruction, vocabulary workshop, in centers? So this person has center set, centers set up. Yes, and I love centers. I'm a huge fan, and I think we need to do more of them in the upper grades. And there's a couple things. I mean, I would definitely probably try and start out uh, the vocabulary teaching or instruction sort of whole group, just so that kids have a sense of, of what the words are and how to find the definitions and how to use their book or their resources to do that. And then in the center, I would have, I mean, literally, you could simply print off the activities for the turkeys talking or for the perfect meal. And you can have a list of the vocabulary words that students can embed. You can ask them to bring, if they have a workbook of any kind, bring it with them and say, OK, you have to use at least three of these words. But that center activity could simply be doing the, the printed activity uh, and saying, look, guys, the way we, that we learn words is to play and to use them. And so this is your time to write with that vocabulary word. You can also do centers with flashcards. Um, again, I know that there's a lot online for Sadlier that they have flashcards for the words and different games that you can play, so that's another option. Uh, in terms of centers, you could also have three different activities the students could complete and just say, hey, you need to use at least five of your vocabulary words or three of your vocabulary words in whatever activity that you pick. Uh, Laura, does that make sense, or do you have other yeah. ideas? 
No, that's great. Um, we we have a couple of people that are, are asking similar questions, so I appreciate it. And uh, let's just spend a little bit more time where it centers however you're setting up your centers in your classroom. It really depends on how you inject um, and uh, vocabulary instruction because they can be in almost every center. Um, vocabulary great. words are, are everywhere. So um, yes, there can be a vocabulary center, of course, and at minimum there should be. But vocabulary words are part of every center. Yeah, and what would be fun is if you even have little table tents that had the, the two words of the day or the three words of the week or the five words of the week. And so at each center they go to, they can clearly see those words. And if they're discussing with a partner or they're writing a response or even in their math, uh, if they have to explain an answer, uh, at, the, at the bottom, can they say, uh, can they use a word, have a bonus or have an other question where they have to say, I learned words and I learned how to um, harass or not harass, hopefully, um, the other people at my table as I worked on my math problems. So that I think you're right, Laura, that at every center they can be integrating their, their vocabulary into their writing activity, into their reading activity, to their reading response, into their, even their, their math responses. And I'd also like to say that not only do we have activities, but we have a ton of great games. There's a Candyland type game. Uh, there's there's uh, all kinds of beautiful games that kids could play at a center with vocabulary words. Great. So here I have a couple more um, questions that are similar. Um, how do we get these vocabulary activities and games and things? And uh, I will be sending you an email and you will be able to uh, download all of the activities that Sarah spoke about today from my email. Um, we also will be sending you the, this recorded video as well, the recorded webinar, so you can share it with your colleagues and you can um, replay it um, and you know, make sure you understand how to, to um, play the games and, and also revisit these, these answers to the questions. And I definitely want to point out right here, if you just Google Vocab Gallery, you go to SadlerSchool.com, whether it's resources or, or this bar, you can get every single activity and game and idea through these resources. Everything is available to you at any time for free, um, and that's why I just love Sadler. Mm -hmm. um, here's another question for you. Any tips or short activities for peer tutoring or partner work with the hmm. week's vocabulary words? That's a good question in terms of peer or partner work with vocabulary. I, I kind of like the idea of simply bouncing words off each other and having conversations and sort of having fun with, with reviewing and saying, OK, um, let's say that we've got two kids who are talking and, OK, guys, um, you guys both want to talk about sports or you both want to talk about um, uh, Minecraft, or you both want to talk about Lego, something, and then say, okay, see where you can incorporate your words into your conversation, and then the other person checks and says, yep, that's the what, right way to do it or not. And so when they check, they have to go back to the example sentence and say, okay, well, here in this example sentence, it said this. So when I say um, that this idea about Legos that follows the same format, it makes the same place, um, there's the classic flashcard review where you up the flashcard and the other student says the word or says the, the vocabulary uh, um, definition, but also just the idea of what do you know and, and how, can, how can you use it and how can you write with it and how can you describe something that you love with vocabulary. So the more that it becomes kind of a game or even a, the game of how many words can you put into a sentence and still have it make sense. Can you do two? Can you do three? And maybe cap it at three. Uh, and then they, they take turns saying sentences with vocabulary, or who can say the silliest sentence with vocabulary words. Uh, so really kind of going back and forth. And again, I, I mean, uh, doing any of the activities, I think you could do it as a partnership and check each other. You could each do one and then trade and say, okay, which one uh, is sillier? You can play games with a partner. So are those good ideas, Laura? What are yeah, other? Yeah, those are perfect. I, I think that everyone should go to the resources to see the games because if you have two or a small group of three, 
you can play a game and they have to. You, I'll, I'll actually go live. If we have time, I'll go live and show them yeah. the different types of games that, you know, and, and the, the activities that you uh, pointed out today, Sarah, they, that also can be done in collaborative work. Mm -hmm. um, here is another one. Um, how can you use unit vocab words on a word wall? And that's funny because, not funny, but we interesting because we actually have activities for word walls. And uh, when we go live, I'll show them that too. But go ahead. How can you use unit vocabulary words on word walls? Um, I mean, I, I think I, I always put up my words onto a word wall, and I'm not sure if you have them organized by type of word, adjective, noun, etc. But I just, I mean, I think that having the words up in the room is crucial to students remembering them and using them and saying, oh yeah, they're a vital part of everything that we do. So I, I think you just put them up on the word wall with your other words. You might distinguish them in terms of a different color. Uh, or in a different spot in the room and saying, okay, here are the key ones we're learning for comprehension, uh, and then for our vocabulary, and here's the ones we are using in terms of spelling. Uh, but I, I think that you definitely put them up. Great. Yes, and I'll show you that. Uh, if we can uh, have the time, I'll show you what we have uh, in regards to word walls. Um, here's a question about a word square. And how can you use a word square effectively for vocabulary words? And when I think of a word square, I think of the square that says, okay, the word, draw a picture with it, make a definition. Is that what we're talking about, Laura? I, that's what I'm thinking of, too, like a synonym, an antonym, because mm -hmm. all of that um, is, is part of learning the, the word, because the students, of course, come to class or to school with a bank of vocabulary words that they already have. But this new word, ha what in their repertoire, what, in, what do they have that helps them to remember this word and mm -hmm. keep it in their long-term memory? So, you know, I, I'm, I would say the same thing. Um, and I like to the, always, yeah, and I was going to say the one thing I point out to teachers is that so often if you say, okay, this is how I remember it, which I do, um, but then that may not make sense to them. And I say, okay, what do you love? And draw that picture of you doing something that you love with that word. Or uh, I know that my son loves his Minecraft, and so I'm going to have him write sentences about Minecraft and all his words because that's something that's meaningful to him. It's not going to help me remember the words because I don't know anything about Minecraft, but it's totally going to help him. And so I think with that word square, the more that you can ask students to personalize it for them, mm -hmm. and their needs, their tastes, uh, what works for them in school, and, or outside of school, the better. Yeah, I think you're right on that. Here's a question. It says, I think, and I want you to elaborate on this. Um, do these seem to work? I'm going to imagine that she's, or he's talking about the activities that you share today. Mm -hmm. Do these seem to work well with ESL population? Yes. Um, and then, and can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, working with words and word learning and vocabulary knowledge with the ESL population? Right. Well, and that's a huge question that I get a lot. And I think the, the biggest key is that the graphics and the visual parts of the activities in the games make word learning more appealing. Uh, it's not this just ugly list of words that they have to memorize because they're important for school. It's playing with them and learning them for a variety of purposes. And so the nice thing about the activities is that uh, I have examples that have the sadly vocabulary words in them, but their answers, the words they choose to use, can be whatever word you want. So if they're on your word wall, do the activities with the word wall. If they're ESL words that you know and that you have a list for, have them do it with those words. There's no uh, set of words that students have to use in any of the activities or games. We deliberately keep it open so that you can use whatever vocabulary list that you need to uh, with those games and activities. Great. So I'm going to go live now and show my screen for everyone uh, so that you can see that uh, where, where we are talking about at sadlyerschool.com. And if you go all the way over to the right here, you can go down to each of the blogs or you could go right to the downloads, which I'm going to go right to the downloads. And I see vocabulary. I have activities, I have games, I have tip she sheets, and I have ebooks. So let's go to, I think it's the tip sheets, and you will see 
what we have posted. Now here is Vocabulary Workshop Word Wall for Grade 1. And if you click on Download, you can see a little beginning here and an example. And you can just fill out the form and download it. And what you'll get is a mini poster for Grade 1, all of the words. And you can use these as a poster of, or, of course, you know, cut them out, cut them individually into strips and you know introduce the words and put them on your word wall so that's just that's just one example i will also want to show you let's see how i get there the the games because we had that question about peer um playing go you know, fish peer, would be a fun one yeah go fish so these are all games that sarah has created and you are able to, and we designed it in-house, and her ideas and how she's, you know, switched up a couple of, of well-known games like Go Fish, um, and, you know, apples, they're oranges, oranges, or what? <laughs> yeah, apples to apples originally, now it's oranges to oranges. Yeah, uh, we have baseball, we have a video game, and she's, that's a brand new one, that's pretty okay. cool. This is candy land. This is vocabulary land. And of course, it, you know, introduce it with your week's words. You have, vocab you have uh, checkers. I also want to go back and go to your, uh, where's the test prep? Because I know that that's important too. I thought that was I don't, I think that's under tip sheets. That's what I thought I was. I'm sorry, I am under games. Uh, so under tip sheets, you know, we have, Advice for new teachers. It's, this is too young or old for you, but um, substitute teacher binder. This is where you're going to find that. Uh, other ways to say went. You know, it seems like a higher grade level, but we have these word walls for each one of the grades. Uh, how to do, you know, conferences. Um, vocabulary, you know, you're the superstar or other badges and rewards we have listed here. So I just want to, you know, just go live. This is this is it. Eight printable Halloween language arts worksheets. Word of the day. Third grade vocabulary worksheet printables. And isn't it amazing? This picture is like five years old and she looks exactly the same. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of where we are right now. We um, let me just check on our questions. Um, the more I would, I love feedback in terms of Twitter. If you want to email me there, uh, or, or tweet me, or you can always send me an email or on Facebook. Uh, I love finding out what everyone is doing, and I feel like it's it's quite the community. We're all in this together, and I have this idea, and then the graphics team makes it beautiful. But everybody takes things in different ways and and shares the most amazing projects uh, that they create themselves in so many different uh, ways and, and, and amalgamations of the same, the same original idea. So thank you for sharing ahead of time. Thank you for being on this webinar uh, ahead of time. And please check out everything that we have because uh, we change it every week. There's a new post every week. And we really want to make sure that it's meaningful and relevant uh, ideas that you can use tomorrow in your classroom. That's terrific. Thank you, Sarah, for being with us today. It's always fun to see you literally see you because you're on my literally. webcam here. Yeah. And thank you to everyone uh, who who spent some time with us today. Um, we are going to have uh, more webinars with Sarah, uh, a series of webinars uh, throughout the school year. So you will all be invited back. Um, and we hope that you will uh, subscribe to her blog. And if you're interested in Vocabulary Workshop, you can um, sign up for a free sample as well. So Sarah, thank you again. And everyone on the line, thank you. And have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.